Hello. Today I'm going to show you how to make a tiny fingerprint charm. But first, you need to know how to take a fingerprint impression. What we have here is something called silicone. It's a two-part epoxy resin. You can buy any brand. I just particularly like this brand. What you would do is you would send a piece of each of the resins to your customer with instructions. They would take the fingerprint and then send it back to you and then you can do your work. Now I'm going to show you how a customer has to take a fingerprint impression. First they have to take a small piece of the white and a small piece of the blue and mix it thoroughly together. This takes a bit of a while. The colour has to be completely uniform but it doesn't take too long and it can set it needs to be a little bit darker than that and it can set, you need to take equal amounts and it can set quite quickly so you ha do have to work relatively quickly. When you see that the colour is evenly distributed you roll into a ball and place, I'm using a playing card but you can use anything but it's best not to put it onto a, a new table or something. Then you take the finger and gently press into the resin. Hold for a while and gently it's a bit sticky, this is a new one and pull out, yeah. Now as you can see we have a really nice fingerprint impression there. And at Tiny Trinkets we usually give enough material for the customer to take at least two or three impressions for each child so that we can pick the best ones to use. Now I'm going to be doing all the demonstrations at home rather than in the studio just to show you that your business can really be started from home. We first started from home <coughs> in 2007 and we did this for about one and a half to two years so it's quite easily done. Now this is put aside and this, w this will be sent back to you but this isn't dry yet so we're going to take one this is, pretend this is a customer's coming back to you we're going to take one that I did earlier and we're going to make a reverse impression so you ha have some something called badger balm don't use Vaseline although it looks like Vaseline because it uh, is affected by the clay so you do need badger balm just take a small piece of the badger balm and rub it onto the impression. Now as we're making a tiny fingerprint charm, we don't want to have the whole of the print because it just wouldn't fit and it'd look awful, it'd take up the whole charm. If we were making a pendant charm then we'd probably be able to use the whole of it, but we're not. So. What you do is, again, you take just a small piece, and it really is a small piece, because you're only taking a reverse impression now. So you take a small piece of each of the different colours. Make sure you put the lids back on, because this stuff dries up really quickly, and it's, this is your stock money, which you obviously don't want to be losing. Mix this together. Now, I've actually mixed too much, but it doesn't really matter. Um, now, what you need to do is look at the, pr the fingerprint and you see that in the centre is where you see most of the whorls. And this is what we want to capture because this is what is, makes the fingerprint totally unique to anybody else's. So, here we go. This is almost even now. Take a small pinch, roll it into a ball and you press it on where you want it and I think about that size is adequate. Now you leave that for about I don't know three minutes, two to three minutes, maybe more, depends on how sticky and it depends on the temperature. 
So you set that aside and that's what you will be using to impress into your art clay. But as we're short of time, I've made one already that we're going to use now. First of all, I'll, I'll show you the tools that we use. You need, well, of course you need the art clay. Now I use art clay silver 650. You can use PMC, it doesn't really matter. And there is an, um, a slow dry clay too, which if you're first starting out you might want to try. And it dries s much slowly and you can um, practice a little bit more. We have, these are the spacers. This is the um, one millimetre, millimetre spacer. This is one and a half and these are three millimetres. Now generally speaking we use these ones for charms. Um, these for chunky charms and these for cufflinks. Oh, for pendants, this, this size. Uh, we have badger balm. Still, budget balm is brilliant. You need lots of budget balm. And you can use playing cards, but I use Teflon sheets. I buy them from a catering company and just cut them up into squares. Uh, I, I use this that I bought actually from Cooks and Gold, but you can just la laminate a piece of paper or anything, and it's basically just to protect your work surface. You also need a plastic roller, they're really very, very cheap. A water brush or a paintbrush of water would do. I use this a little pokey thing, which you'll see when I start. Um, a straw, or I use these little hand drills. Again, they're very, very cheap, and I definitely would advise you buy one. And you need some scribes to write on your charms. And um, also, you have these tiny little cookie cutters. And these are ones you buy especially for this. You buy, you'll buy them from sort of, you know, art clay shops or sugar craft shops. Now, we're going to use a heart shape today. So, here we go. You get your piece of Teflon or your card. You then put plenty of badger balm to stop the art clay sticking to the surface. Now when you first open your clay, this one is a 50 gram pack and it has two 25, it comes in two 25 grams which is quite good because you don't want to be using too much of time because this is very expensive but you don't need to use very much at time so it all works out fine. And as you, your business builds up you can buy more and you can get more of a discount, which is always good. Now when you first take out the art clay, it's supposed to be at its sort of optimum, at its prime time, but um, I just like to give it a little, it's sort of, but I just like to give it a little mould like this, just to, I don't know, it seems to need that really, because you don't want any little bits and pieces in it or Right, so you take your spacers, it's got to be a silly gun, and you will gently roll out the clay. Actually, that probably needs, this is something that does take a bit of practice, so this is why I think that I will be posting the second article in maybe two weeks, so it gives you a bit of time to have a little practice getting this just right. If you make charms and they're not, um, they don't turn out right or you make a mistake, you can put them in a little pot and then you can send them back to Cooks on Gold who will melt it down and give you the money back for it, so that's good too. Actually this clay does need, oh no it doesn't, this clay. It's, uh, as I say, it's, it's supposed to be at its optimum, but often it isn't. And it really, it's something that you have to, you know, get used to seeing. You ha it has to be just right and not have any little bits on it because that would affect the surface of the finished product. Now, 
you gently roll it like this. You don't, don't flatten it too much, but um, it needs to be quite nicely. Let's see. Now, put that to one side. Now, you take your fingerprint impression and you press it. Oops, little hair there. You don't want little hairs. You press it into the clay. You take your cutter, you position it where you think it should be. I usually position it in this, this way so that you can write a name and put a hole and that's quite, I find the best way to do it. And that's taken out the paper for a little while so I don't know how to do that. Now take the clay off. Now at this point it's really important that you preserve this clay. So, this is how I keep it. Quite lots of clay artists do it in different ways, but I just... This is a little piece of um, J cloth, and it's very, very wet. And this, of course, is cling film. And this is a small piece of clay that I previously used. So, and it's very, it's just actually perfect to use now. I find it better than when it comes out of the, the pack. You wrap it very tightly in the cling film, wrap it in the J cloth, like this, really tightly, and you put it back into the container and click it shut. And you put that away in a dark place, keep it with all your tools, and that will keep for months. Like that, that's fine. Right now, we have here our shape. You can use a straw to make a hole now, but I don't do that. I always use one of these to make the hole afterwards. All you have to do now is take a water brush, or if you don't have a water brush, a paint brush and water will do, and just go around the edges just to give it a nice smooth edge, like this just pays to do this sort of thing now Rock, because otherwise you'd have to do it later and um, it's easier at this point to do it so now there we have our finished product I know it doesn't look much at the moment but you'll leave that to dry for 24 to 48 hours and then we'll finish it off thank you for listening to me